Hey guys, so in this video I'm gonna um, take a look at Tang Garden and the 3D printed insert I made for it. So let's open the box. Um, the lid closes entirely with this one and um, yeah, when you open it you've got the board here and the three rule books because this insert will hold um, Golden Age, Ghost Stories and the base game. Um, it's made by Next Level Board Gaming and I made some modifications to it so I'll show those to you guys as well. Um, so when you open it, everything fits really nicely. There is, is some space in here where you can put the player boards and the starting pile. Um, and then maybe let's start here. So these are the landscape tokens and um, the landscape tiles. I didn't modify any of this. Um, it works really well. It's, it's a lot easier to set up. Um, then they have a little tray for the minis, which I just painted. Um, this I did modify. If you buy the insert off their website, uh, the site, it's, it's going to be an actual box. The sites will be filled and I took those out just to save a little bit on the filament. Um, I actually printed everything with a Creelty, um, a Creelty Ender 3 Pro, uh, which is about $250, I think. And um, all in all, the filament was maybe 20 bucks, maybe 30 bucks off of Amazon to get this insert. So um, that's what, what that will cost you if you want to make your own. Um, this is the, what is it again? <laughs> it's the, the lanterns and the coins, the metal coins. Um, and this is actually really nice when you're playing. It's, it, it makes it very easy to get the coins that you need when you need them. And I did make a small modification, so I'm gonna try to flip this. And you can see that I took out some of the filament here as well. And just, I kept the supports because I didn't feel like taking them out and they don't bother me. But it's a little less filament than what you would get if you just print it the way you find it on the next level board gaming website. So then this here, um, again, made a little modification, a little less filament to print because it really eats up a lot of filament. Um, and these take all the landscape tokens or rather the, the big landscape tiles. Fits really nicely. And then we get to the first major modification, I'd say. So this is um, a box that's kind of an all purpose box. Um, it has the cards for the base game um, characters, so all of them are in here, but the two ones that are flipped actually are the Herbalist and the Wayfarer. I keep them like this so it's easier to take them out if I want to take them out. Um, next to it you have the small landscape um, tiles. You got all the cards which use the official sleeves of the base game. And um, as you can see the Herbalist and the Wayfarer, because I think Next Level Board Gaming didn't really have the add-ons in mind. Uh, when they 3D printed, I put them in this area and I put little magnets on them. They're neodymium magnets um, off of Amazon. I think you can buy like 300 of them for 10 bucks. They're, they're two millimeters thick. Um, I did have to drill a hole in the basis using a Dremel, but all in all, it's pretty simple. And with some super glue, you can, um, you can put them in there and then it becomes really easy to just magnetize them and make them stick. There's a whole bunch of other tokens in here as well. Uh, the metal first player token, all the herbalist stuff, the, the fox spirits in there, the, the, the dice, like everything that doesn't have a place elsewhere, it went in here. Uh, and it, it fits those guys really well too. So that's a modification I made. Um, let's look at the pavilions real quick. So this is the pavilion tray. Um, as you might be able to see here, I. The, the Creelty Ender Pro is like a 20 centimeters or 25 by 25 centimeters. I have no idea how much that would be in inches by heart. But um, I think this is about 40 centimeters, so it's almost twice as big. So, um, or even bigger than twice as big. So if you want to print this in one go, you need a fairly big 3D printer. But you can just print it in two parts and then glue it together with some super glue, which works really well. I do recommend getting some activator if you want to do that. Um, so that you don't have to wait a minute for the super glue to dry and you can just put it together and it will dry immediately. Um, if you pay a little attention, you might have seen that the pavilions are different from the ones that you'll find in the game. I 3D printed different walls because I didn't like the cardboard. Um, and I painted them as well with some dry brushing and some washing. Um, they're not the most well painted things in the world, but I think they look a lot better than the stock ones. And the coolest thing is, since I already magnetized these guys, it's like, well, what if I put a magnet in the bottom? So I did that, and now you can just put them in there, and they'll stick. And the biggest complaint that I've seen in reviews of Tank Garden is how fidgety it is to get these guys in there. So now you can just easily 
rotate them to whatever cardinal direction you want them to be at um, by just you know moving it like a dial <laughs> almost. So that works really well. Um, I'm gonna take this guy out again. So those are my pavilions. Then there's, um, well, the trees. The trees are actually important too. So on the other side, there's the trees. And if you look at the website for Next Level Board Gaming, they don't really address where the apricot tree would go, but it fits really nicely in there with the other trees. So I don't think they foresaw that, but it fits really well. So um, good for them. For the token box, same thing. Had to print it in two goes. It's uh, connected with some super glue. And um, up here you have the cubes for your player boards. There's the um, the character tokens and all the other tokens are in here. I made a small modification because the, the ones from the next level board gaming insert actually have a bit of a bevel in there, um, which eats up about 25% of the space, I'd say. And I might want to 3D print these later on, just go on Thingiverse and pick up some vases, some butterflies and that kind of stuff. And, paint them and 3D print them and I want to have enough space to put them in there. Um, I'm not sure if they'll fit but I think they will. So <laughs> I'm not going to make them too big but this gives me a lot more space after I remove that from the 3D model. Um, and finally the bridges. Um, the bridges are custom as well now. I 3D printed the sides, put that on um, some, web <laughs> some website. I'll, I'll put the links in um, the video description. And yeah, this works the same way. So a little neodymium magnet at the bottom. And now you can just drop them on there and it'll automatically go there, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, upside down won't work though, because this is pretty thick. And um, since dremeling the hole in there, there is some leeway. So it's not really flush with the base. And then the thickness make it so that the strength is not strong enough. But you could get a stronger magnet, I guess, but I, you know, I don't think it's really worth it that you could flip them upside down. For playing the game, this works really well. Like if you, you see, if you just move them a little bit back and forth, it'll, it'll automatically fall in the, in the right spot. So, um, so yeah, that's the, the pavilions. Um, then finally, the last stuff we've got um, is the expansion for ghost stories. Um, no modifications. The only thing I thought was a little bit weird about this is how the tiles go underneath here um, and then the decoration scars go up but once you figure out how it goes it's pretty straightforward you just split them in half so I think these are the greenery and the tiles that I put here on the rock and the water went there so that's kind of it um, and then you can put this on top and again they're sleek they fit really well um, down here you'll see oh actually that's where the other ones are so rock and greenery go there and then you got your player cards for ghost stories in there. Um, the imperial tiles are on here, and then there is a couple of landscape tiles for ghost stories and the minis that I haven't painted yet. Um, there's also a little razor, a riser in there, um, so that everything gets flush in the box. And then for the golden age one, same thing. Um, underneath the player cards, you'll find half of the landscape tiles, and underneath the decoration cards, you'll find the other half. Everything fits sleeved. And there's the, the, the lanterns from, from Golden Age and the other minis. The only thing that didn't fit in here, but now that I look at it, I think you might be able to fit it on top, um, are the small landscape tiles that came with Golden Age, so I just store them in here. For me, it's not really that big of a deal. Some people might have an issue with that because it doesn't separate it entirely. I think these guys are, might be Golden Age ones. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, and that's pretty much the entire insert. So how does everything go back in the box? Uh, well, let me flip it this direction because it makes things a little easier. So you put in your expansions, then you put in your ghost stories. Uh, sorry, you put in your pavilions. On top goes the token box. You can put in the pavilions. Um, I actually dropped my cards, so let's get all of those. The character cards go on top of the landscape box, so right there. And well, with the modification I make, or I made the Wayfarer goes there, the Herbalist goes there. There we go. Um, and then we just have to do a little, a fun little puzzle, I guess. So this goes in here. Um, this goes at the bottom. This one goes underneath it. And actually, now that I think of it, that's one of the things that I 
didn't like as much about it because you have to be really careful with uh, the coins for them not to fall out. Like if you put this on a table with a little bit of space, like they're flying. And <laughs> especially since it's a really nice insert and I highly recommend it, but if somebody who has no idea how it works starts grabbing stuff um, and just put stuff there, I promise you those coins will fly all over the place. So you want to be careful with the coins, but aside from that, I don't have any usability issues with it really. Um, let's see, these guys actually, so this guy goes down here <laughs> and then these guys go to the side so that you have room to put this one in. And the trick there is that there is an opening here so that the, the player boards can fit in that space perfectly. And then all you have to do is put your rule books on top, your game board on top of that, and you can close it. And just to make sure that you can all see, it's completely flush. There's no space underneath the lid. All right, so in summary, I highly recommend the Next Level Board Gaming Insert. It's really great. Um, the modifications make it a little bit better, but that's mostly the magnets. Um, the modifications I make to save filament, well, they'll save you filament, but I don't think they're absolutely necessary. It won't save you that much. The magnets really add to the game though. Um, the biggest issue that I hear people talk about with the game is that it's hard to see, um, or it's hard to put the characters in the pavilions um, because they just go all over the place and the magnets solve that issue. And they also help you to store the herbalist and the wayfarer. So with all that being said, I think I highly recommend this insert and um, you should totally give it a try.